Okay. Uh, do a little thing. Let's see here. Okay. Now that we're all set up here. I just got this in the mail today. Um, I am really excited. So this is the Darkwood Tarot by Sasha Graham with art by Abigail Larson and her art style is just like something about it screams nostalgia to me. Almost reminds me of like the Disney Sleeping Beauty type art or Black Cauldron maybe. Um, but that kind of era 90s, um, 90s dark kids like art shows and stuff. So just kind of something about it. I know neither of those movies were like the 90s, but I watched them in the 90s. And I think there was a lot of shows that had kind of similar vibes to them that came out around that time. Um, maybe almost a little like Anastasia feeling. Anyway, moving on. So this came in today and I'm going to hope there's not too much glare. So I did open this. I couldn't resist. I opened it in the car on my lunch. Um, but this is going to be kind of like first impressions type video. So it has this really cool magnetic case, which I really like. Um, so here it says, let's see if I can get that to focus. Hi, camera. So it includes 78 card deck and 304 page full color guidebook, which is the part I was surprised about. Um, most of these, like, most of these decks don't usually have, um, this much of, like, a guidebook, especially the price there. Maybe I just need to, like, set my focus to manual. <laughs> um, there we go. You can see the price there, $31.99. I think I got it at a bit of a discount um, from an online bookseller, not Amazon. Not Amazon. Um, refocus. Right. So I went up at the car today, so all the plastic's taken off of it. It was shrink-wrapped, which I'm not, not a big fan of, but yeah. So full color inside. Full design, wrapping all the way around. Um, I like this, the like cross cut of an apple. It's pretty cool. Um, and of course, I didn't put it back in correctly, so we don't have the cool. Uh, let's see. So there's supposed to be this cool ribbon here. Um, make it easier to take the guidebook out. So this is what I said. This guidebook is a chonky, chonky boy. Um, so Darkwood Tarot guidebook. I will admit, I just flipped through the book. I didn't actually look at it, so what I was reading as a review is that this book actually tell it more, reads more like a novel or more like a story of um, of this character, the fool, um, going through the fool's journey, which is pretty cool, but it walks you through all that. I like that the first page there's a quote, um, if you can read that, but it's from Star Wars, <laughs> it, um, which is pretty cool. Um, I just like that. So Darkwood Tarot, Sasha Graham here on this page, um, she's the author, um, and then here's the artist here, Abigail Larson. I would really recommend checking out her art, like if you like art, like if you're an art person, um, or if you just like want to look at some cool dark-ish goth witchy art, like check her stuff out, it's really cool. Um, contents, so part one, um, reading the wood, part two cards so there is like the first 37 for the first 43 42 pages are just relating to the story and how to use this book and stuff where the last then the last pages um apart from the epilogue i guess are the cards so i can't read let me start over i don't want to go too much into this because i just want to have this be a shorter video Welcome to the Darkwood Tarot. The forest is ever so happy you have arrived. It sensed your presence, felt an opening, and called to you. Its thickets and thorns were wishing, waiting, and longing for your presence. You've responded to its siren song, and now it promises to reward you deeply. Pathways, visions, and delights were prepared for your adventure. Are you ready? So, I don't want to, like, I'm not going to read all this, but there's a fairly long introduction, about six pages of an introduction, and when I was reading, there's like a little blurb when you Google the the tarot deck, the Darkwood Tarot, 
it gives you a little thing on like there's like a little blog post and this is a shadow deck um which is kind of a cool thing so um it's investigating your shadow self it's supposed to look at things that are the maybe then what you view as the negative qualities of yourself um and how to work within them and um embrace them as a full as a full person so then there's a once upon a time story so this tells you a little bit about tarot what it is a little bit of the history of it and that anybody can do it anyone can read tarot you don't need special powers um some tips go with your instincts what catches your attention in the card these are kind of cool these are things that like i didn't necessarily know when i first started not that i'm like super expert um there's a bit about your shadow self so shadow self is a term used in the analytical psychology it represents the hidden and repressed parts of the personality it's the place where we put stuff, qualities, desires, and squirmy things we'd rather not acknowledge about ourselves, such as jealousy, anger, sexual urges, etc. The shadow is a container into which we place things we do not we place things we want but are not socially acceptable. The shadow contains talents we may have hidden away if someone told us we shouldn't be using or doing it. The shadow is where we stash things we have done that we're not proud of or don't want to admit to ourselves. So here's a bit about shadow meanings in tarot. Um, and they give us some examples. The Empress's shadow meaning offers a second example. The Empress's typical meaning is creativity, so his traditional reversal might be narrow-minded. A shadow reversal asks you to consider how you have hurt, disparaged, or damaged the creativity of another person. So that's kind of an interesting take. Um, upside down world of reversals, so a little bit on the traditional reversal. Reversals as blockage, which sometimes I do with oracle cards. Paying attention to patterns. Um, and you can also ignore reversals so this is kind of an interesting thing here that it gives um and then a little bit about book of shadows or a grimoire which i'm actually working on a baby's first book of shadows or baby's first grimoire as i'm calling it um here's a list of suggestions for your book of shadows um and here's a little bit on initiation alchemical questions um, some more on alchemical stuff, a little bit on enchantments, a little bit about paying attention to recurring patterns, um, and now we get into stuff about the cards. Oh, so here's a little bit on the numerology, um, beginnings, partnership, creativity, structure, challenge, heart expansion, uncanny, infinite perfection, wish fulfillment, and endings. These are things I'm working on learning right now so that I can understand the cards a little bit better. Some stuff about the suits. Um, different suits and then the court cards and some different spreads which is pretty cool and then part two is into the cards so a bit about prologue so once upon a time a girl sat beneath a circular canopy of poplar trees who had always watched over her she was the shadow witch who had grown like a beanstalk season after season from a worn bundle in her mother's witching arms into a ravishing young woman. One night, the fat full moon was bursting with so much magic that it grew a tall, it drew a tall, angular boy from the shadow to the girl's side. The shadow witch was everything the boy had searched for in his darkness. She stood before him under the rustling leaves on her tiptoes and tilted her head up to receive her very first kiss. And then, so this goes, continues, and then we go into the fool. And the fool starts with, the archetype of the child. Each step brings you closer to your destiny, is the quote. And then we have the shadow witch takes her first step into the dark. So this is where everyone was saying when I was reading some the reviews that it reads like a story. So this is kind of cool and it's something that I've thought a little bit about um, recently. So then on the other page, we have a full color. Um, this is about an A4 or it's your standard journal size book. So we have that in full color print right there, which is really cool. Um, and then we have the meanings and the shadow meaning. And then we go into the next card here. And so we have this for each of them. And I like that we have like the quotes here or like kind of like if you're ever reading like a, an article, they'll have like a bubble quote that stands out to be like, this is important. So these are like, key, I guess these would be like the key words. Yeah, because there, I mean, there's kind of a list of keywords here. So if we look at meaning, charisma, dynamic personality, working wonders, ability to take action, these are all keywords that you would normally see with the magician. 
but they've kind of condensed it down into a quote um, to kind of, I guess this would, could be a good way to help learn the major arcana. All the magic of the world resides inside you. A few more pages. So it looks like for the major arcana we have quite a few pages. And here's the high priestess. She's very green. Which is normally what I would associate with the empress, but I guess it could work for her. We've got crescent moon. Multiple crescent moons around her arm. We've got the full moon in the background. Standard symbols that you would see with the high priestess. And she says, you are the divine whisperer of the universe. For the empress, who's very red, um, which kind of, rather than motherly, I guess makes me associate it a bit more with like a lustful, but then uh, this is a shadow deck, so maybe that's the point. Um, your passion is the blueprint to your magic. Is it just me or is there a little less on the, the empress than there is on the high priestess? No, it's all the same. Okay, just me. The emperor here is shown as a ram. This reflection, man. Here we go. Um, kind of a more plain card, but I really like the simplicity of it. Define the boundaries of your life to create a kingdom. Okay, this time we do actually have less. So, the magician here is almost an androgynous, could potentially be a woman figure. I like the as above, so below on the magician's table here, along with all the symbols of the other suits like you would normally see. But then we have the as above, so below, which is pretty cool. Right. Anyway. So this is the first masculine, like truly masculine card. The magician doesn't always have to be, but the my understanding, my interpretation is that the emperor is typically a ma it's masculine energy, it's active, which I guess, I mean, the traditional explanation of masculine energy is as active energy and feminine energy is passive energy, which, you know what, I don't, I don't, I don't really like that <laughs> interpretation. Of, I like the idea of having an active energy and a passive energy, but I don't like ascribing them to the two binary genders because I know lots uh, it's it's just it's this thing I don't like anyway so he says define the boundaries of your life to create a kingdom which is a very active thing and anyone of any gender could do that um, for the hierophant we have a picture on the next page um, the answers you seek stand before you interesting interpretation for the hierophant we have tree here um, we have the keys again we have some symbols um the tree woman is doing that that symbol uh wrong hand that's why it looks funny this one that's like you see like catholic priests and stuff doing it all the time it's a blessing symbol i believe oh we have actually down here at the bottom the two worshipers that you would normally see um the lovers this is an intense card i think there's a lot going on in this image I do enjoy it. Also, that's the type of man I used to date. Long hair, beard, <laughs> a little gangly. <laughs> um, love is the unifying, expansive, and binding force of the universe. For the chariot, spread your wings and take flight. Oh, it has like archetypes for them up here. I didn't even notice that. I got so distracted. Um, I've not really seen an eagle as a chariot before, so that's kind of interesting. Um, strength. I like this interpretation of the strength card. Um, I always find ones that aren't a woman and a lion or a bear very, like, intriguing. Um, I find them interesting. And I was reading, so someone in one of the reviews said that there wasn't any variation in skin tone in the people in this, in the Major Arcana, but... I don't know if it's supposed to be lighting, but her skin tone certainly looks lighter than than her skin, or darker than her skin tone. So I am seeing some variation in skin tone already. And yeah, there's it's not very male heavy, but a lot of things I was reading today, some different people's reviews of different tarot decks, and a lot of people complain when the energy is too masculine. Um, so I don't know. Um... For strength, universal power lies within you. 
the hermit. I really like this image. This is one of the ones that like drew me to this deck because it's on all the websites for it. I really like it. Um, Wisdom of Silence is deafening. For the Wheel of Fortune, the Symphony of Life is a perpetual wheel of motion. So we have the wheel. Maybe this is what made me think of like that old um, Sleeping Beauty cartoon by Disney is the spinning wheel with the little demon guys flying around it. Um, justice. This is a pretty powerful Justice card here. Um, what you do to others, you do to yourself. Next we have the Hangman. The deep, the Hanged Man. I'm having a hard time talking today. I just finished a stressful shift at work. The deeper you look, the more is revealed. So here we have this witch again. Upside down. Then the death card. Let death teach you how to live. And I, I like I like death cards a lot in tarot decks. Um, it's that little little emo goth kid soul inside of me screaming out for attention. Um, and I like this one because I feel like it mimics the Rider Waite Smith in certain ways, but in other ways it's very independent of its own. So I really like it. Did I read the quote? Yes, I did. Let death teach you how to live, which also embraces my little emo kid soul. Um, temperance, transcend duality to embrace entirety. That, I like that quote a lot. So here she is. You can see the tower in the background. Then we have the devil. Make fear your friend and turn obstacles into allies. The devil is the archetype of the shadow. There's this one. And this is very, like, Maybe it's that Anastasia, uh, Fantasia, there we go, Fantasia thing, type art style. That little Fantasia gargoyle scene used to scare me so much when I was a kid. Alright, now we're on to my favorite card, the tower. Um, the act of release is the art of surrender. Eh, I think there are other tower cards that I like. <laughs> it's just made me think of go then. There are other worlds than these, um, which is very tower energy. Um, let me focus a little bit better here. So I think, I mean, it's very tower. It's very your standard tower card. Um, the Hush Tarot tower card is one of my favorites so far. Then we have the star. Universal alignment is your neutral state. Natural state. Jeez. Words, Tiff. Okay. With the star. There we go. The moon. The moon is another one of my favorite cards. Portents are seen in the mind's eye and felt in the body. So before I show this moon card, I actually pick up. I actually first found this deck on Pinterest and fell in love with the moon card. The moon card is the first one I saw, and I was like, "Oh my god, this art is stunning! I need this deck." So this is the moon card. And it just, I don't know what it is about it, but it just, it speaks to me. I like that instead of the crayfish or lobster or whatever is in the other one coming out of the water, we have the woman coming out of the water. And she looks like she's just been having a night to herself, doing whatever she wants under the full moon. And I just love it. Then we have the sun. So the sun is always supposed to be the most positive card in the deck. And I do feel like this one has this level of positivity to it with the color, the color scheme change to it here. So it says health and vitality flourish. The sun is the archetype of the creator. And then we have judgment. You have passed the point of no return. It's the archetype of transformation. A little vampiric drama there. So shift and lastly we have the world you are the universe archetype of integration i like this as the world card we have the little four corners that we have in your standard world card she has the wands she looks very transcendent so i think for this i just want to do the major 
Arcana. I don't want to get into the rest of it, otherwise we'll be here all night with me gushing over art. Um, so take this as your preview. Um, maybe we'll do a quick thing where we ask, because we have, a, I guess I can spare some time. Let's, so the cards, one of the things that I was reading when I was reading reviews are that the cards are kind of flimsy and they kind of are. Like, I'm hardly putting any pressure and this is the bend we're getting. So I think they could be a little bit better um, as thickness wise, but that's my tiny hands again. But the, uh, the main thing is that for $32, you get a full, thanks dog, I love you too, you get a full art book um, with full color pages and full color prints of each of the images, um, which I don't think you would normally get. Um, so it depends on what you like. Like if you don't want a guidebook and you just want some really nice cards and you want to interpret them on your own then maybe this isn't the right deck um, these are probably standard cardstock weight where I tend to prefer something around 300 350 GSM um, a little heavier weight doesn't bend really easy they do flow really well they're not sticky um, but they're very flimsy and I keep, I'm already worrying that I'm going to bend them because even though I'm fairly gentle, my hands are tiny and it tends to give me a bit of a problem. Careful, bud. Leaning on stuff. He's being very needy tonight and I don't know why. He's just in an old man mood. Okay. Do you have anything else to say? Apparently you did. So I just wanted to take three cards, do a simple, give me, you know, something about yourself. I don't want to ask specific questions, just what did you want to tell me about yourself? Queen of Cups. So Queen of Cups is a uh, fairly maternal, but can be a little overbearing, very emotional, emotionally responsive. Let's see what they say about the Queen of Cups here, because I'm curious, curious about how they've described their cards obviously have different images. Um, I mean, she looks like she's got something that she's up to. So the Queen of Cups. She's the empath. Active imagination, empathetic qualities, dreamy and love-filled, soft and nurturing, an encouraging, understanding personality, excellent advice, the mother who understands everyone's problems and never takes sides. She's full of deep understanding. So the deck is uh, very nurturing, very supportive, very empathetic, very understanding. She's the mother figure. What else do you gotta say? The star. So we read the star a little bit. Um, let's go back. Just the Hugin. Hugin, get up. You can't be slamming into things, buddy. It's gonna go pout now. Pouty dog. Okay. Um, right. Where was I? I was looking for the star. Healing, inspiration, minimalism, motivation, creating a new reality, emotional clearing, gifts of the heart and soul, belief, peace, pleasure, space cleared, hope and optimism. So this goes along with the empathy, nurturing, the deck is very inspirational, it's very, it's very inspiring, it's very motivating, um, it's very hopeful. Um, and the last one is the hermit. So some spiritual awakening, spiritual findings, searching for the truth. Um, let's see what they say about the hermit. But but dog, quit scratching. I need to cut his nails. Sorry, you keep hearing them. Um, 
Wisdom of silence is deafening. Archetype of the sage. Silence, space, thought, sequester, meditation, curiosity, questioning, removing yourself from noisy and from the noise of everyday life, inner knowledge cultivated by personal investigation, acute listening to the universe inside of you, sharing wisdom with others and leading by example. So this deck overall is supposed to be very emotionally charged, very nurturing, very empathetic, very supportive, hopeful and inspiring and wants me to look a little deeper, embrace the silence a little bit. Um, I'm just going to go back to the Hermit real quick and see if there's anything else that stands out here. Space. Inner knowledge. Leading by example. Yeah. So, that's a little overview. Overall, I'm, I'm really excited to get to know this deck better, um, especially given this little reading here. I think these are really exciting. Um, cups, cards are ones being an overly emotional person um, who's way too empathetic. I always identify with cups cards, so I like to see when those come up um, in a tell me about yourself spread here. Um, so, Overall, I think I definitely, I'm, I'm happy with the cost of this deck versus what I get. But like I said, the cards are a little flimsy. So if it is, if that's something that's really important to you, then maybe forego this deck. Um, or just be prepared that it's not going to be one of those heavy duty, high quality decks. Like the Threads of Fate cards, absolutely amazing, gorgeous quality paper. Um, I'm a bit of a paper snob, so the fact that these are so lightweight is a little off-putting, but there is a good, oh, this is the other card that I first saw when I was looking on Pinterest, and I was like, oh my god, I need this deck. Um, <laughs> but there's, so the this part of the card is a little bit of texture, this part's really slick, so there is a textural difference to the cards. Um, they're a little lighter than poker cards, um, so I tend to like things a little heavier duty, but I'm really happy with the artwork. A lot of times I find in tarot cards, I get disappointed with the artwork. There'll be one or two really good cards. The rest will look like the artist got in a rush. And I understand, I mean, these are, there's 78 cards. You've got to make 78 unique, amazing art pieces. Anyone's going to get burnt out trying to do that in a short period of time. Um, so I can understand, but I feel like this deck, they all look like the same amount of work and thought and design and passion went into each of them. And they're very cohesive. The color scheme, even in these cards that are all very different, it's cohesive um so that's definitely a positive to me so if you have this deck let me know what you think about it if you don't have this deck are you going to get it and also if you have this deck tell me what your deck's personality is i'm really curious to see if it's similar or if your deck's very different and uh, let's take a look at that that last energy i always love looking at the bond card two of swords so some decisions to be made somebody's ignoring some decisions is it me I could be I have a lot going on um all right so if you hung out with me for this um kind of scatty messy <laughs> messy uh first impressions review um I appreciate it and let's see if I can get this out tomorrow and if not I'll see you guys when I see you <laughs>